So finally, Disco Base V3 is here. If you build Discord bots with Discord.js and you're tired of long, messy event files, manual cooldowns, and repeating the same logic again and again, this update is for you. In this video, I'll show you what's new in V3, how the old long code is replaced with a simple structure, and why Disco Base V3 is a game changer for serious Discord bot developers. Let's get started. So here is our package's NPM page. And DiscoBase-Core is also our package, which manages the core edition of DiscoBase. You don't need to install it separately. The Create DiscoBase package handles everything automatically. I just thought I'd show it to you. All right, so on this page, everything about DiscoBase is explained, what it is and how to use it. If you want to understand things in more detail, we also have our website where you can find everything as well. We've made a lot of changes there too and enhanced the entire website design so you get a better experience. This is the homepage where we explain DiscoBase and related things. And below that, you can see some testimonials. If you're also using DiscoBase and want to leave a review and have it shown here, please join our Discord server and create a ticket to submit your review. After that, there's the About page. And then here is our Guide page. On this page, DiscoBase is explained properly with example commands. You can also search for anything from here if you want. Then there's the change log, where all the changes made to DiscoBase with each update are shown. For example, for the new version 3, we've written all the details here. We made a total of 14 changes, and you can see how many new things were added, what was changed, and what was fixed. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the website. Now let's see how to create everything. First of all, you need to create a folder on your computer and then open that folder in Visual Studio Code, just like I've done. By the way, to set up and use DiscoBase, you need two things, Visual Studio Code and Node.js. You can easily download both for free by searching Visual Studio Code Download and Node.js Download on Google. After that, click on the terminal option in VS Code and open a new terminal. Now, the magic starts. To create a new DiscoBase project, you need to type npx create discobase at latest in the terminal and press enter. After that, it will ask if you want to proceed, so just press enter again. Then you'll get the full DiscoBase setup process. Here, it asks whether you want the core edition or the source edition. Let me explain the difference. In the core edition, the files and functions that manage DiscoBase are hidden so you get a fully clean structure. In the source edition, you get all the DiscoBase files and code as well. The benefit of source edition is that if you're an experienced developer and want to make changes to DiscoBase itself, you can do that. Otherwise, both editions work exactly the same. For now, we'll choose the core edition and press enter. Then it asks where you want to create the project, in a new folder or the current one. Since we already created a folder, we'll select the current folder and press Enter. Next, it asks if you want an admin dashboard, so we'll say yes. Then it asks about required packages, so again, yes, and then MongoDB support, also yes. After that, it gives us the complete structure and starts installing all the required packages. As you can see, you get a very clean structure. If DiscoBase didn't exist, you would have to set up all of this manually. Now, the package installation is complete, so let's see how to start the bot. First, go to the config.json file. You'll see a lot of options there, but don't panic. I'll explain everything later. For now, we just want to start the bot. For that, we need two things, the Discord bot token and the Discord bot ID. So for that, we need a Discord bot. Let's open the Discord developer portal and log in with your Discord account. If you've already created bots before, you'll see them here. If not, you won't see anything. Simply click on New Application and give your bot any name you like, then click Create. Your application will open, starting with the General Information section, where you can set the bot's icon, name, and description. After that, you'll see the application ID. This is one of the two things we need, so simply copy it and paste it into the ID field in config.json. Now for the token, go to the bot tab. Here, you'll see a reset token button. Click it, 
reset the token, and then copy it, go back to config.json and paste it into the token field. That's it. Now save the config.json file. After that, go back to the Discord developer portal, and in the same bot tab, scroll down a bit. You'll see three intents there, enable all three, and save the changes. Now the bot is ready, but it's not in any server yet. To add the bot to a server, we need to create an invite link. For that, go to the installation tab. For now, select guild install only. You can enable user install if you're making user install commands, but for now, we'll stick to guild install. Then choose the Discord provided link. Below that, in scopes, select applications.com, mans, and bot. In permissions, select administrator. Then copy the invite link and paste it into your Discord server. Select the server where you want to invite the bot and click invite. Now the bot is in your server, but it's offline and won't do anything yet. To bring it online, go back to Visual Studio Code, open the terminal, and run npm run start, then press enter. In a few seconds, your bot will start. That's pretty cool, right? Now, if you go back to Discord, you'll see your bot online. If you check its profile, you'll also see the slash commands badge, which is given to bots that support slash commands. You might think we haven't created any commands yet, and that's true, but DiscoBase already gives you two commands by default, one slash command and one prefix command. If you go to the chat and type ping, you'll see the ping command appear. Select it and run it, and the bot will reply. The same goes for the prefix command, it also replies. If you want to change the prefix, just go to config.json and change it to whatever you want. Now, let's briefly understand the DiscoBase folder structure. At the root, you have three main things. The src folder, config.json, and discobase.json. You already know what config.json is for, and I'll explain more later. Then there's discobase.json, which manages some discobase options and features. First, there's error logging. If you set this to true, error logging will be enabled. Whenever an error occurs in the bot, it will create an errors folder and save all errors there as files, so you can easily read and understand them. After that, there's presence, which is basically the bot's status. If you enable it, you can manage things like the bot's status, D&D, online, idle, the interval for how often the status changes, the activity type like playing, watching, or streaming, the streaming URL if you choose streaming, and even a custom state. Then there's command stats, which are used for the disco-based dashboard. The dashboard tracks full command usage, like how many times a command was used and on which server. You can disable this if you want. After that, there's the activity tracker, which you can also disable if you don't want to track every activity, or you can exclude specific folders or files from tracking. Then there's package.json and the readme file, which isn't important right now. After that, there's the main SRC folder. Inside it, you'll first see the commands folder, where you create all your slash commands. Then there's the events folder, where you create all types of events, like button interactions, message create, welcome events, and more. Then there's the functions folder, where you create any custom functions you need. Then there's the schemas folder, where you create your MongoDB schemas, if you're using MongoDB. Finally, there's index.js, where you can manage bot intents and write additional code if needed. Now, let's take a look at the disco-based dashboard. To open it, go to the terminal and you'll see a link there. Open that link in your browser and you'll see your disco-based dashboard. This is the main page, where you can see your bot statistics, activity, and other information. And here you can see that the database is currently connected, but it's showing as disconnected here. There are also other things here, like this pop-up. You can see this is a task manager. From here, you can add your tasks, just like a to-do list. After that, there is the servers tab. Here it shows your total servers and other details. And below that, you can see all the servers where your bot is present. From here, by clicking the delete icon, you can make your bot leave a server. After that, there is the commands tab. 
Here, your prefix and slash commands are shown. And if you click on analytics, you will see all the statistics of your commands. Then we have the embed builder. From here, you can design your embeds and then simply copy the code, whether you want it in JSON format or as embed code. After that, errors are shown here. And then there are settings, which you can manage. All right, so now let's look at the rest of the commands. Now, let's create a simple command. If you want, you can directly go to the SRC folder and create it there, but we'll use a slightly advanced method. We'll open the terminal and type npm run generate. Here, we'll get options to generate commands and events. We'll choose command because we wanna create a slash command. Then we'll give the command a name. After that, it asks whether we wanna use any builder, like a button builder, etc. For now, we won't choose anything. And here you go. Our command file has been created. The benefit of creating it this way is that you already get the basic command code generated for you. I'll just name this command button. You can add a description if you want, but I'm not adding one right now. After this, you can create any type of command, literally anything. If you want to add more options, you can. I have many videos on my channel explaining how to create different systems, so you can check those out. All right, so now that I've done this, I'll quickly create a button. We've created a button here. Now I'll run the bot and open Discord and then check the command we just created. You'll see it showing here. I'll simply run it and look, our command appears. Very cool. Now, if I click the button, nothing happens. That's because we haven't handled the interaction yet. So again, we'll go to Visual Studio Code and open the events folder. Here, I'll create a file called buttoninteraction.js. You can name it anything you want. After that, I'll write module.exports and set the name. Here, you give the name of any Discord interaction event you want. Whenever that event is triggered, the code in this file will run. Right now, we want to handle the interaction create event. If you know, interaction create also triggers for modal submits and many other interactions, which we don't want. We only want this file to trigger for our button. For that, we'll use custom ID. We'll give the custom ID of our button here. If you want, you can also handle multiple interactions in a single file by providing an array of custom IDs that works perfectly fine. There are many more event options that you'll really like, but for now, we'll simply write async execute, take the interaction, and write the code for what should happen when the button is clicked. For now, I'll just reply with hello when a user clicks the button. Now, if I go back to Discord and click the button, you'll see it replies with hello. That's great, but this can be abused. I can keep clicking the button again and again. We want to add a cooldown. You might think this is difficult, but it's not, especially because you're using Disco Base. We'll simply go back to our event file and add cooldown and set the cooldown time in seconds. For example, 10, save the file. Now, if I click the button, it works once. But if I click again, it tells me to wait. Cool, right? If you wanna customize this message, you can do that too. Just add cooldown message and write something like, you are clicking this button too quickly, please wait. If you use time in brackets, Disco Base will automatically replace it with the remaining cooldown time. Now, when I click again, you'll see the custom cooldown message showing up. Similarly, you can set rate limits, like how many times a user can click before a cooldown, and many other things. There is also permission management and a lot more. You can easily learn all of this by visiting the Disco Base website, where everything is explained clearly in the documentation. Just like event options, there are many options available for commands as well. If I take you to the Disco Base docs and open the command options section, you'll see everything explained there. Then there's the event options section where all event-related options are explained too. We work hard every day to make Disco Base better. If you have any suggestions or need help, you can simply join our Discord server. You'll get a dedicated forum for Disco Base where you can learn many things and also get help. All right, guys, if you liked the video, please subscribe and like, and don't forget to go to GitHub and star the repository. Bye-bye.